I mean, some managers may do it that way. Right. I kind of like to be freed up to, to go out and sell. I am a pharmaceutical salesman, and yeah. this guy is the Viagra. <laughs> Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. With us today are two of our industry's finest. He is the mastermind of Helsner Management and a top respected talent manager. And he is a sought after promo and trailer voice that you have loved for decades. We have the fabulous Jason Helsner and Scott Rummel. Welcome to the cottage, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello, hello. Loving you know what? the rhinoplasty. I'm really digging your new style, Jason. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, dude, this is the look. He likes to be in disguise, you know, so you don't get recognized. Seriously, what were you thinking? I, this you know, be good or? I, I try to keep a low profile. I try to keep a low profile. It's working. Well, that All right. enhance the profile. So, yeah. I think I'm going to start off by telling everybody how we actually managed to get you here. Yes. Um, so we reached out to Jason and say, hey, man, how would you like to be? our famous 301st episode of Beal Buzz Weekly first shoot in the actual new space, yeah. the Beautiful cottage here. And he space. said, awesome. uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Come do on, the, it wasn't like that. I don't do those things. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm really busy, Chuck. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to pull anything like that off. Yeah. Sorry about that, man, maybe next time. Yeah. And so I called Scott. <laughs> and we said, and I unless said, he Scott, gets to Jason won't do our show. Will you please talk to him? And he goes, you know what, let me talk to him. Yeah. And yeah. so he talked to him and Jason calls me back and says, you know what, I think I'll do the show. Yeah, See? and all I had to do was start mentioning other managers. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of what went down. Oh my god! You know? I knew <clears throat> Scott Rummel would have a little bit of pull, yes. so sorry we had to manipulate the whole situation yes. to get you here. But I'm glad we did. No, Unless I'm you get very a glad. Restraining order. We said we're just going to keep after you, but thank you because you guys have had a long, wonderful relationship as talent we, and manager. We, we have, and I'm yes. shy and timid. That's the reason why I was afraid to do the show. But I've but I feel good now that I'm here. Yeah. Now that we had all those beers before the show. <laughs> now we had a happy we're hour. Good. Yeah. Well, I have to say, man. That for, first of all, we've never done this little format before where we've had the agent and the talent at the same time. Um, but what's really, really special, I feel about today, or one of the things that's really special, is today we're, we're going to talk about mainly trailer, the trailer mm -hmm. industry, and we have the really, really cool opportunity to be sitting here with one of the biggest managers of the trailer industry, yeah. period, okay? Stop. And, hold on, Huge. and one of the biggest, I would say top five or top three mm -hmm. guys in the whole trailer world, uh, voiceover guys in the whole trailer world. And man, this does not happen very, very often. So yeah. you guys out there, anybody who's interested in a whole Cheers, trailer man. thing, right? today you're gonna get some really good mm -hmm. info, right yes. Stace? Yes, um, Well, let's dive in here. So. For those people watching that don't know, what is the difference between an agent and a manager? Great question. Thanks, it's Jason. Very, it's very, it's, it's, I've been trying to come up with the perfect answer to that for almost 20 years, but it, is, it really comes down to, we're very similar in the, in the way we, you know, we have relationships with our talents, our vendors, and we want to, you know, we want to get opportunities and work for our talents. Um, managers, uh, it's it's a smaller roster. It's right. a more focused roster. I think um, with Scott, you know, I've got under a dozen guys on my roster, and uh, it's just more about kind of a smaller operation, so you don't have an accounting department, a contract department. I mean, some managers may do it that way. Right. I kind of like to be freed up to to go out and sell. I am a pharmaceutical salesman. And yes. this guy is the Viagra that I'm pitching. <laughs> what, what are the side effects? What are the side effects? Well, we've never looked at it that way. Side effects are your movie makes <laughs> billions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, but that really is the difference. It's just more focused. I, if I had to put it in a nutshell, it's just that, you know, uh, an, agents, an agency, you have to have an agent and you right. have to have an agency mm -hmm. if you're at the level Scott's at and you're, and you're looking to kind of increase your trailer career or or that niche um that's what i'm focused in i'm i'm specifically
go after movie trailers, TV spots, radio yeah. spots. Yeah. And don't you find that some relationships, some some decision makers go to managers? I think I think you know I'm fortunate enough to be in the handful. It's a small business, and there's you know, and I even love and like my competitors. They're not that much. I mean, give me your work. But <laughs> no, I think <laughs> I no, you know, I think because they know we have such a great stable of talent. And I right. say this a lot when I go out and visit clients. I say, as much as I'd like to think you guys call me because you love my winning charm and personality right. and you, you know, they're calling me for for Scott Rummel or or one of my other many talented uh, voices. And it's it's okay to mention their names. Oh, absolutely. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I don't get, I don't get angry like Brian I used Lee, to. Brian Lee, Chris Corley, <laughs> Ben Patrick Johnson, Bill Ratner, Jeff and, Collins, yes. Graham Judd. I wanted to say people ask me the, the same question a lot. So why do you have both an agent and a manager? And um, the simple answer that I've heard around town for years is the manager makes the calls, the agent takes the calls. Mm -hmm. And what that really comes down to is the, the manager is really the marketing arm of my business. Right. He's out there looking at whatever um, movies are coming out. He's talking to the decision makers at the studios and all the things. Not to disparage the agents in any way, the agents also do those things. Right. But the, the point of having a manager is it's like having an awesome sales team. Yeah. The other thing I would always say is that the manager is always a fan of the talent. Mm -hmm. Like managers have such a small stable generally that they are big fans of every person they have. Exactly. And they have yeah. to be. They have yeah. to be. True. And so they if love not, their that's not a good thing. They that's love right. their yeah. reads. They love yeah. um, you yeah. know, they they look forward to selling them and um well it's <clears throat> such a broad industry having that concentrated focus and attention and belief is right. really is exactly really amazing to have. and if the agent has a a hundred people which is really kind of a smaller agency yeah that's a lot of people exactly. so if you're focusing on you know 15 12 15 20 guys that's pretty manageable where you can be making calls on each behalf. You can say, this guy would be great on this movie. This guy would yeah. be great on that. And, and is that actually, and is that actually what you do? Jason, like you, you physically like look at the people that you have and you see new movies that are being in production that are coming out. Do you actually proactively ahead of when anything happens, make any calls to I, make things happen? I do on certain films. There's there's different strategies that work for different films, you yeah. know? And I mean, a lot of times you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get the call and they already kind of know they want, you know, we want Scott. You know, we definitely want to hear Scott, maybe throw in one or two other, you know, choices so yeah. we can kind of mm -hmm. go to the higher ups and present. And um, so, so a lot of times it is, you know, they're calling up for Scott Rummel takeout, and I and I give it to him. And yeah. then a lot of other times, Scott and I have done this, and I've done this with other talents as well. Where, you know, we're looking six months down the line, what movie's coming out that's just mm -hmm. perfect for for us, and we'll do maybe a pitch or we'll put together a a, a read. But I I I think the the broader thing is because I'm a fan of Scott and because we're both fans of films in general, we get yeah. excited about putting him on a movie or when we can kind of give a high five if it's not in person, you know, over the phone. Dude, we got it. You know, it's, yeah. it's fun. It's, it's, a, it's a win we get to celebrate. Beautiful. And, um, and going back to what we were saying about agents, I just want to just want to circle back to that, that to me, I feel like the agents are partners as well. They're like, Absolutely. they're team members for me and, and I may, and I feel like I'm a division of their agency. So, so not to, um, you know, because I, because I go to them for, yeah. for wisdom, for advice on how to negotiate maybe a contract or what, you know, if they're gonna use this and they're gonna do this usage and that usage, they're, they're a great resource for yeah. me. So yeah, I think- Yeah, ideally you need to all be on the same, you're on the same side. And I gotta be honest with you, uh, my agent, Mike Soliday, and Jay and I are buddies. Yeah. And we'll get on a conference call and it's tough for us to get to business because we're laughing and making each other laugh. And we you guys will each text other each, at each lunch. other. Yeah. We tickle each other at lunch. <laughs> but again, Scott Rummel, you're a talker. We all know that. He's a if, talker. If there's a, a relationship where an agent and a manager 
don't get along, which yeah. I don't know if that's ever happened. Maybe it does. But I just can't imagine how that would work. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, we, we really are uh, all three a team. Yeah. Fantastic. And I think we're pretty fortunate to have that relationship. I don't think that's, I mean, I feel very fortunate to have that with the stable of guys who, who came yeah. with me and my venture to my mm -hmm. company. I mean, I feel very, I have, I have a special place in my heart for all of them. And but, you do. You're <laughs> but this guy, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not very often that you, you know, you get to work, you get to do what you love and you get to yeah. uh, work with people you actually like and enjoy yeah. being with. So I think, I think that helps because at the end of the day, it, it just makes it more fun. Absolutely. You actually look forward to going to work, getting Beautiful. on the phone. Yeah. We awesome. make each other laugh yeah. every day. Yeah. So Scott, um, man, I remember back in the day when you were first starting to get into trailers and mm -hmm. promos and uh, you were doing so great with commercial stuff and then one day you're like, man, this has always been my dream and now I'm really, really going for it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and basically I just wanted, because a lot of people don't know out there, how does somebody become, because I remember that you, you became so amazingly great at promos and trailers in such a short time, what did you do to become so good so quickly? Like, is, is there a way to train to become that good? So it's funny that you say that because early in my career, I, if you listen to my very first demo tape yeah. with my high voice, you know, when I was <laughs> doing stuff like today at Del Taco, you know, yeah. or whatever, um, you'll hear a trailer on there because it was something that I always wanted to do. So I had a natural tendency to start listening to what the trailer guys were doing, how they were doing it, taking a little bit from this guy, a little bit from that guy. Uh, when Five Men in a Limo came out, the great Don LaFontaine yep. uh, limo video, which if you haven't seen, you need to go to yes. YouTube Absolutely. and watch it. I had that thing memorized. I, I knew every little nuance of each of the guy's reads. And so, and you do that not to, uh, to do an impression of them, but you just see what they're doing. What are the mechanics of how they're touching a word? Um, why sometimes are they elongating the ends of sentences or some of those things? So you develop your own style. And the, the truth of the matter is I, I just worked really hard on it. I was working behind the scenes on trailers all those years that I was doing it. They say that, uh, you know, when what is it? Preparedness meets opportunity. That's yeah. what, when yeah. success yeah. happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there was a moment in my life where um, I had done a trailer demo and it sounded pretty good. But the biggest thing about doing that demo is I wanted to convince my agents that I could do it. Mm -hmm. So because if they ever got the phone call, then I would be ready. And one day that phone call came yeah. and I was ready. And so we walked into, the, I've told this story before, but I walked into this uh, Kaleidoscope Pictures, one of the biggest trailer houses, it's no longer around because everybody has gone off and started their own shops. But, you know, I walked in there and I was, you know, I felt pretty good. I felt pretty good about the copy. It was for a movie called In Dreams, Annette Benning, Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> In Dreams. And uh, it was kind of in my wheelhouse. I, remember I walked that in. I read it, and then the people behind the glass were just looking at each other and going like, and I thought, are they mad at me? And I stepped to the <laughs> mic and said, is something wrong? And they said, no, we're just wondering, where the heck have you been? Mm. And I said, is that good? And they said, that's very good. So it was all those years of work and listening and practicing that brought me to that moment. And um, I love the stories you tell <clears throat> driving from Orange County to yeah, LA, to, reading yeah. the billboards out loud. I used to read the billboards yeah. out loud. Do you want to tell them about, because you were there when I, I wanted a trailer manager. It was an interesting time because the strike had happened mm -hmm. and my trailer agent uh, was let go during that time. And I really needed to find a new agent and I needed to get a manager. And I had met with some of the managers, and I really wanted to be with Paul and Jason. Um, <clears throat> but maybe you can tell them about the day that I came in. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 and I do, I have to give props to Paul Whitner, Paul, who yeah, was yeah. my, um, he brought me and everybody has their start as Scott 
explained in this in this career in this industry and um I met Paul Whitner years ago waiting tables and he was starting this thing with Don Morrow I don't know if you guys remember Don yeah, Morrow yeah of course but um and so I went on to work with him and at the, and at the time this uh what, maybe 15, 16 years ago, something like that? Well, 96 was 22 years ago, so. Oh my goodness. I think you and I are celebrating 20 years. Man, Aww. man. Yeah. I feel like we should have a cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have baked. Or more of that beer. <laughs> no, um, so yeah, no, he came in, we were at an old, we were kind of at a, like an older kind of office on Beverly Boulevard, and Scott came in, his signature Hawaiian shirt. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we had just heard all those. You had just done, I think, um, take take back the planet. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, oh, I remember that. Planet, planet of, the of the Apes. Yeah. yeah. And all your and so we just started going through all the the stuff. And and as Scott was walking out the door, he said, uh, I said to him, Hey, if this guy Paul doesn't take you, I'll take you. And uh, <laughs> and and Scott actually did like a stop and like turned his head like like oh, and for it, real? but I was cracking up because I was new to the business and right, I was I, right. you know and um, well I think what I said too was I walked in that day and I had met with another manager oh, in the morning yes and what did I say that's right this the <laughs> other manager we don't have to say their name yes the, no the other manager had not Scott said. Um, was have you heard? No, he said, have you heard any of my work? I asked the manager what of my stuff they liked. And the person said, well, to be honest, I haven't heard any of your stuff. You. And nice. I literally said, check, please. Yeah. <laughs> and I drove over to their office. And what did I do? Uh, you asked us what we liked, and we started listing off all the, the, yeah. the TV spots we'd heard. Because we were, again, bringing it back to the, we were fans of his work. Yeah. So yeah. I think it starts with that. You don't just want to take somebody because they're a, commod a hot commodity yeah. or, a, um, you know, you got to believe in their sound. And, and when I listen to Scott, even still today in his, and it, it's a it's a funny industry we're in and it's a funny niche we're in but it's it's so cool we get excited i'm sure we've all had it one time or another yeah. our wives our our friends get sick of us going ho, ho, hold on during yeah. the commercial yeah. and like turning up and going and listening for the rated pg-13 or, and going yeah. oh man oh, that, that was, was awesome. so good okay. there's scott again <laughs> but oh, we yeah. all do it because it's your like it's like your lifeblood yeah, you know yeah. so yeah. you sit there yeah. but and, and and so i do think there are it, it is, and, and Paul and I used to say this all the time, but it's like when a talent sends a demo and you hear, you know, just a mock trailer voice demo, it's so bad because you right. just hear, in a war, I've t I have a big voice it's like and a I've big been told cliche. I can It's do. just a caricature of a trailer. It's a character. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. so you hear it and there's just, there's no heart, there's no read, there's no pulling apart the nuances, like he said, of elongating a certain word or, or making sure there's... Um, just like a twist on something that gives it a little mm -hmm. more impact. And uh, it, it really is like having a guitar, is what we always said, but not knowing how to play it. Yeah. 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 And he knows how to play it, like, yeah, he you does. know. So Jason, what are some of the challenges and some of the highlights of being a manager? <sighs> oh man, well, you know, it, it, it's got a very similar feel. I love Las Vegas, so I'll use that as an analogy. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I like to go in, I like to play blackjack, I like to pull the slot machines. I feel like this job is kind of every day you go to work, you're pulling the slot machine and you're, gonna, you're seeing if something's gonna hit yeah. that day. Yeah. And that's how it feels to me, honestly, when I get a call that Scott's got Wonder Woman or Brian Lee has Hotel Transylvania 3 or mm -hmm. you know Chris Corley just got Ferdinand or Bill Ratner's on a new comedy. I get excited and I, it's, Listen, you love these guys and you want you want to give them good totally. news. Yeah. The hardest part about being a manager mm. is giving the bad, bad news, news yeah. or giving you you know you just kind of feel like you're a you're a doctor like giving like oh, I'm sorry man the other guy got it. It just sucks. Yeah. I mean, there's no other so way. So you're to the pharmaceutical. Say. Unless and the other guy was one of your other Unless guys. Unless the other guys were one of your other guys, news, and then you kind of covered. Bad news for you. Good news for me. <laughs> then you, the Christmas um, party's still festive. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, well, when you, I mean, you and Scott, because, you know, we'll talk about Scott because he's sitting right there. Um, but, I mean, Scott, has, you've been working for so long. And so, Jason, I mean, 
Why do you think Scott has remained so relevant and so in demand for all these years? I just think he's got a voice that's, it's a, it's a classic vo trailer voice, but he can, he just knows again how to play that instrument. He can make, he can make it deep and scary. He can make it, he can, t somebody once said, um, I, I'm trying to remember the movie it was, it was, uh, it was the Mark Wahlberg, like, uh, Boston Marathon movie. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But you did, like, like, there was somebody else who was taking a class and they were trying to do that spot and they tried to do their version of Scott Rummel at the, like, but it just didn't sound the same and what, what, the, what I think this coach wisely said to the, to the talent who was trying to, to give it the college try is that you're focused on your voice and your read and how I can just make my voice sound good in the trailer, whereas Scott is just lending his voice to the story, story. to tell the story. Right. And even if you only have a couple of sentences to tell that story, you have to make those words and those Absolutely. sentences yeah. count. Yeah. You gotta like, you gotta punch it in the right places. You gotta soften it in the right places. That's great, and, and I totally agree with you, mm -hmm. Scott. It, 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 Getting that low thing that you do nowadays, because sometimes <laughs> I hear you and I'm like, oh my God. That's deep. Like, how's he doing that? You didn't always used to go down there like that. No. So is that something that just by default, just by doing it, that it actually happened, that you develop your lower end, or did you work on developing your Are lower end? Are you sandpapering end? your vocal cords? No. Me? You know, um, Brian Cummings uh, was a great mentor of mine early on in my career. And it's when I was in my 20s, and I had a pretty high, higher voice. Yeah. And, uh, and so he said, hey, here's the good news. Your voice, as you grow older, will deepen. It will show more life experience mm -hmm. and texture. And, you know, I was thinking back then, I want it now. But uh, I started working on it, and then I remember, you know, starting to get some calls for scary movies. Uh-huh. And, um, and the mic placement is a huge thing with that because Dawes Butler, who was also one of my mentors, used to tell me, the mic will pick up every nook and cranny of your voice. So even if you're right here in this place, you know, almost no voice at all, you, when you're in a theater hearing that, mm -hmm. it still is loud and, 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 yeah. and so, you know, that's like the flat read that's become very, very uh, popular. And so, but as you get older, your voice naturally will deepen. Cool. And so um, it's easier to say things like, how do you kill what's already dead? <laughs> that's my favorite. <laughs> I know, I love that one. That's my favorite. And, and it's not just the death, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the fact. No, it's the vibe. Well, of it, the well whole. I think it, it's he's Scott's voice is like I, I always tell guys like you want to have your signature sound. You want to yeah. find your signature sound. But I think that I think what works for Scott and not against him is um, his signature sound never really goes out of style. Right. It's, and it doesn't get. And you can hear him on an Academy film. Right. right next to a comedy film, right next to a horror film. Yeah. And you just, it, it's not so distinguishable that you're like, ah, it's that guy again. He exactly. can kind of switch yeah. it up. He can kind of switch it up. So, I mean, the Which, trends and the, the trailer reads, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm on fire, Chuck. Feel <laughs> yeah. it. You can hog them. It's got to go in there. The double Dutch. Um, <laughs> but the trailer reads, I mean, the, the trends of That's the That's exactly style, what I was uh, going to ask. There you go. We're like in sync. Just a few less of us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what are the trailer read trends that you're seeing? I mean, we've, there was super announcery and then it went around. And where do you think it is and where is it going? And I, I think they're letting a lot of, of younger guys in. Guys that, that, quite frankly, I think some of them are, are really good. Some of them, to me, sound a little, a little pushed. Some of them sound like I could do it, honestly. I'm, that's maybe, honestly, maybe it's time for me to let the cat out of the bag that the whole reason I've been working with right. this guy yeah. is to try to train my voice. Yeah, you're he ready. Often calls oh, Jason. It's you took 20 years pretty cool of voice. training. <laughs> After 20 years of training, Jason, you're announcing your career. Yes. Are you gonna yes. represent yourself? He's pretty good. He calls me and if I'm in the car or something, he goes, let me read you the copy. 
and you're always right. Get, yeah, and he yeah. gets so, he's like, and ter- Terry's his Scott's wife has even been in the car. And she's like, don't read him the copy because I'll, because I will I'll literally pick up my and I'll go, dude. They want it kind of like this in a world. And he's like, are you? He and he goes, don't. Don't read me copy. It's sick and sweet. Don't read me copy. It's sick and It's so God. funny. That's but funny. it's a bad habit of mine. I have to try to do like a, like a lot of times I'll get on the phone with my guys and I'll be like, L- listen, I, I love the audition, but at this end, I just think it'll sound better if at the end you go really fast, cut the rated PG-13, like, and I'll do my yeah, version yeah, right, of it right. for them. That was pretty good, right? Yeah, oh, really yeah. Good. Hey, listen, yeah. let me get that mic. That's really good. Um, so, so, so stylistically <laughs> speaking, is is trend more, still still story is king, right? Yes. Story is king. Are they, but are they are they skewing a little younger-ish they're, rather than older announcer-ish? I don't think they want to hit you over the head with voiceover these right. days. They feel like the audience is sophisticated enough to um, and that's why they're using a lot of quick cuts and maybe yeah. just like you see a lot of spots that just have a rating and a yeah. title. Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunate for us. We, we like more narration. We all, I, I always say err on the side of more narration, not less. Yeah. But, yeah. but it is, uh, it is, I am hearing younger guys. I'm hearing a lot of editors who just, you know, are going to finish cause they just have a clean yeah. mm-hmm. young kind of, I don't know. What are we now? Are we Gen X? Are we millennials? I don't, I don't even know. know what. Where we are. Like right in between I have to the say two. something though. You know, I, I think a lot of the younger talents that I hear, they can handle uh, a title and a rating. Yeah. And yet, though, when there's a there's a pretty big Story, spot yeah. body, then they go to the other guy. Then they. That's a tougher little yeah. thing to learn. Yeah. And usually in a campaign like we were just doing Operation Finale. Right. And some of the spots were title and tag, but some of them were really narration heavy. And um, it's kind of interesting because it's a whole different thing. You don't want to be a part of the story. You just want to help move the story along. Right. So there has to be a sensibility about how you read it. And, yeah. and you can't think about your voice in those. You right. think about what the mood is, what the story is, what the attitude is. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but it is interesting because sometimes I hear some of the younger guys um, reading longer copy, and it's it's, it's a tougher it, it's, yeah. a, it's a tougher it's a tough sell. Time yeah. takes you out of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's right, and I think that's true for all <laughs> acting. I mean, I've heard that from some of the great screen actors that like your role is is to play your part in the film. The more you get out of your head, mm-hmm. the the better your character is going to be because you're just lending your role to the to the ensemble yeah. to the to the piece. And I think that's what Scott does so effortlessly. Yeah, like sure the does. great Hal Douglas. When you guys are, whether it's a for the t- for a TV campaign, radio campaign, what um, can you talk about when there's a trailer read that's targeting a female audience versus a male audience? Oh yeah, um, I've actually been asked that before by client. Like, tell Scott this is this is going towards a female audience so they want they want that like war and he's got and it's funny i have melissa disney Mm -hmm. i have a couple other gals i represent and it and there's been so many times i've been like why don't they use and i get asked that question a lot at parties or why don't they use more women in movie trailers and um why don't they it's it's jason it comes down it comes down to um focus groups and the male voices just test higher for some reason and that's you know I test very high. With he tests women. very high. He does. He, he, you, you were told that, weren't you? Yeah. He was he told that. He likes that. He, he, was, he was told that. that exact thing. You tested really high with the with the women. He went home and like bragged about it to Terry. I tested really high with the women. Uh, well, I would do the same thing. Yeah, he is the Viagra. Right. Yeah, he is the Viagra. He is the Viagra. No, but Scott, seriously, from from a from a read perspective, mm-hmm. um, if you know that something. A, a certain part of that trailer is now created more for the women than the men. Mm-hmm. Like visually, we know that the guy stuff has you know more of the girl cuts, mm-hmm. and you know they show a little bit of sexy blah blah. And then the girl cut, the women cut, has show a little bit more of the dudes, right? But from a read perspective, do you change that? And it's not always that. Um, maybe there's uh, like when we're doing the Avengers stuff, maybe they'll focus on one of the female characters, right. and and she's a hero. And so the audience is drawn to, to that. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's a subtle change in the way that I will read those spots, especially if they're buying stuff that they know is going to be playing to a large 
uh, large women demographic. But they'll also ask me to do spots for the same movie for Nickelodeon and Disney, right. where it's like now it has to have kids' sensibilities. And it has to has to be fun. If there's a, if we're going for the young male audience, it's going to be action. You know, it's going to be right. the Avengers. You know, right. or if yeah. it's for women, it's the Avengers. Or and I'm not trying to make a stereotype, but there are certain elements of the movie that they'll focus on for individual yeah. spots, right. and that yeah. makes perfect yeah. sense, man. Yeah. yeah. That's really, really cool. Tell them about how our days go. Those are fun. Like, Jason, how do your days go? Like, well, ask him, ask him how, how, uh, how far in advance he gets noticed to All right. that there's a job. So yeah. Jason, how far in advance do you get noticed <laughs> do you get a notice for an actual like, job? Like what were you saying to me today you or yesterday? You all, all day long. I forget. Um, well, I thought you said four o'clock, but you said in four minutes. Oh, <laughs> so a, a I lot was of leaving times. them waiting in there. <laughs> well, it's funny. Cause we're both kind of night owls, so we'll both be up till probably like him, probably later than me some nights because I'm still on school kid zone. You stay up till like what nine thirty p.m. Nine thirty, <laughs> sometimes ten, ten fifteen. Double digits. Wow. If my wife lets me. Um, <laughs> No, but I, I, I'm up till about midnight, 11.30 midnight, and then, um, but I wake up super early because I got to get the kids off to school and I'm having coffee, but I kind of know not to call Scott before, like our, our industry is funny. People think, like LA just doesn't get started till 9.30 or 10 yeah. o'clock in the yeah. morning, which I love. That's another reason I love this job, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, if I had to be like in a cubicle in a suit and tie at like 7 a.m., I yeah. couldn't do it, but uh, so I'll, so we'll, usually the first thing we'll schedule is maybe 10, 10 30 in the morning. And that seems to work out fine. But occasionally we will get the midnight call or we'll get, you know, the spot A has to ship. Call? Oh yeah. You know, and we've got two, sh we've got two spots and they got to ship tonight and they got to finish. And, and, um, I'll call him and if he's hopefully not a, like an angels baseball game or something, we can get him, <laughs> get him in the booth. Uh, and then. But he's right. A lot of times <laughs> when I, we do get these calls and it's always it's become almost like a funny cliche in our business of ASAP. Like they're like, we need it like now. So I'll call Scott and go and it'll be 342, you know, <laughs> and I'll say, Scott, they want you in the booth. And he'll say, can we should we call it a four o'clock? And I'll go, no, man, they want they want to do like, yeah, they want 345. Like in th <laughs> and he's like, in three <laughs> minutes it's from now. He's like, I got to turn on the booth. I got to get in. And I, I'm like, sorry, man. I got to stretch. And then yeah. he'll call me after and go, can I get more than like a three minute warning? Is that possible? Can we do like a 15, 20 minute warning? I'm like, I'm sorry, so man. I'm at the mercy. So well, it used to be like an hour. Yeah. yeah, it was in the yeah. early days yeah. when I started. Yeah. It was like okay, an hour, and everybody thought, "Really, you have to be ready in an hour?" Yeah. Then it was half an hour. Then it was fifteen minutes, and then literally, it's like they need you in the booth in two minutes. Yeah. And and that's okay. I mean, that's the way our business works. But yeah. it's like you being have a fireman. To get it done. Exactly. The you bail goes bail off, and, and I slide go. down the pole. Yeah. No matter what. Great yeah. analogy. He's always brought that. Like, and I and I waited tables and bartended for for a lot of years, and I feel like. Our business, if you boil it down, it's customer service. Aside from having the goods to like be able to, to sell, having the Viagra to sell, you've got to be able to <laughs> have good customer service yeah. with that sale. So, so we just both try to try to be very uh, friendly and get the job done. But, but the truth is, nowadays, if you say sometimes I can get him, but I can't get him for forty-five, you can lose the gig. Yeah. I mean that fast because they just won't wait. I mean they'll wait probably for Scott if he's on a big campaign that they don't want to replace him but a lot of times the smaller movies the indie movies it's the first guy they get yeah. the first guy they get in the yeah. cut i know i like it whenever we've seen you and you're like can i use your booth i'm like sure scott i like when he does yeah well we did that we had dinner yeah. not too long ago yeah. and then i got we were in the car it. It was yeah. and then we actually had to turn around and go yeah. back to stacy's booth yeah. which is tiny <laughs> so scott's in there going like oh crap you know but you got it done it we got good. it done and yeah. then we went to pay yeah. for dinner yeah so you hear yeah. this all the time right People say, I have a great voice. So why is having a great voice not enough for trailers? Because you can have a great voice, but then now you've got to uh, have the technical aspect down. If I think back to 20 years ago, we were messengering those little dats, digital audio transfers. Oh, you like, know you know, and all the talent had to do back then was get behind the mic, 
over ISDN or read it, record it, give the tape. We would do CD mailers and bubble wraps yeah. for you know to get demos to producers and editors. Um, but nowadays, I mean, you need a fully equipped home studio, you know, which they're not cheap. If you want to have like a good microphone, a good sound system, and you guys know about that more than anybody. I'm, I'm a, I'm a technical idiot doing emails and phones, and that's it. But you've got to have great equipment. You've got to be able to cut and edit your sound files, and you have to, you have to be tech savvy. And the clients are wanting it right now, Immediately. right? Immediately. Yeah. So like the turnaround time for me editing it, like if, if I've gone like 10 minutes over, Jay's on the call going, hey, the client's wondering where the stuff is. Okay. ETA, and I usually ETA. Am, I usually am saying, uh, uh, I usually play it for him and say, look, it's coming right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but he <clears throat> takes his time. He really makes it sound good. And he, he probably puts a lot more care mm -hmm. into it. A lot of guys, they just read it, e edit, send you know but scott yeah. will play around with it he must right. take out all the noises yeah. and make right. it sound yeah. clean and, and clean um, the breaths and the clicks yeah. yeah i come from that background so yeah, like you yeah. well he's got to feel like he's actually working for his money right <laughs> he's the man seconds. Oh. yeah like you sitting on couches talking to people yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.